when you broadcast a game, when you do the play-by-play or you do the analysis, the idea is to meet with both teams. If you can go to practice, you go to practice. That was a, that's a John Madden thing. Go to practice, watch him practice. Um, and pick up whatever you can pick up. You interview the coaches, presume, you know, preferably the quarterbacks. And so we saw Seattle first, and they arrived from the plane and were hopping around practice. They, they, they immediately got on the field, and before they started practicing, they got in a big, huge, large circle, jumping up and down. I think Sarah Walsh took a, a video of it and said, Seahawks won jet lag nothing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's what she tweeted out, and it was true. And it was just like watching that practice, It was they, they were all one unit, and they were all just pulsing with energy. And you spoke to them afterwards, too. I spoke to We spoke to Pete Carroll and Kenneth Walker and Geno Smith and Ryan Neal, who was laugh-out-loud hilarious. I can't wait to have him on here. And I did tell Kenneth Walker that Michigan State – Oh yeah! Refused to allow us to give him an what, NIL what deal, say? and told him that he needs to call Michigan State's SID and coach and ask for a thousand dollars. Did he just laugh? He kind of didn't know how to take it. Oh, and I'm like, I'm being serious. Yeah. Like your school is the only school that did not allow us to give an NIL deal to someone. I told him that. <laughs> I don't know if that's why I only had ten yards rushing. Uh. But um, hey, he needed to know, and that's the whole he thing too. Is that you know, uh, that I saw that from the Seahawks, and I'm like, they, they are wired. They're on a four game win streak, and the Bucks were a lot more low key. And then speaking to Brady, I mean, you could sense like he he was not backing down on anything that he said. You know, in his podcast about the energy, the effort level effort. was embarrassing on game day. Yep. Rich, not to interrupt, but like when you get Tom Brady, is it just like you guys all in one room? We were and in it's a just conference Tom? room. We were in a conference room in in the Bucks hotel, mm-hmm. and it was um, Tom, you know, um, Bucks rep, I but, yes, and um, all of us doing the game, and the producer, okay. and Sarah Walsh, who was the Bucks sideline reporter, and I think Andy Gregg of the NFL Network was in the room too, and we're just sitting there talking, and Brady was talking. He said everything is below the line right now. Effort and Kurt was like, so what are you seeing? Like, that's not working. And he kind of gave Kurt a look like, aren't you watching the film? <laughs> and and he was straight up honest, saying how, you know, they they're he believed he believed in the guys that the room that 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 the way that the game ended the week before was definitely something that could be built on. Yeah. And all that they were saying, like the, the Seahawks were bouncing off the walls and everybody from the Bucks was like, all we got to do is win this game, get to the bye week, we're five and five, and then we'll see what we can do. And I thought to myself, Business trip, man. No doubt. Yep. And um, Brady, again, he struck me as somebody fully engaged. Whatever you want to say about what he was distracted, disinterested, the words that we've heard, mm-hmm. um, dispassionate whatever August, really yeah and and i saw a fully engaged guy who by the way had come off seven straight games with 40 or more attempts first time in his career and he looked like he was 22 i'm serious just seeing him in person was just because we were all saying he looks gone you know what mm-hmm. not in person not in person no no and mm-hmm. he was chill but he was straight up honest, like this is not the way we can play and this is not the way, you know, we want this to go. And he's not used to it. He wasn't used to like talking, you know, having a running back constantly run into the linebacker because there's a missed block, missed assignment, this that sort of thing. Totally not used to it. And to the point where I asked him, I'm like, because like, where do you go from here? And I'm like, is Gronk done? And he said he was. Like, Gronk's not walking through that door. Hasn't talked to him? And I, or... I, I, I didn't ask him that. I asked him if he's spoken to Odell. Oh. And he said, you know, not lately. Oh, thank you. Was his answer. <laughs> but in terms of Gronk walking through that door, that ain't happening. Yeah. No. Well, don't need Odell if Julio's playing like that. Well, that's the issue, too, is, you know, Julio could play like that now, but then next week he's not yeah. healthy, whatever. But the team that I saw – on that field in Munich, okay, like, again, it was just one game, and we hadn't seen anything like that in a while. That's the team that can win good. a lot they were good. and win yeah. and beat pretty much anybody, which is 
running downhill. Rashad White, a revelation. If he can run like that, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. he threw Quandre Diggs out of the club. That was even my call. Oh, yeah. Get out of and, here. And if you watch it, the call back, you know, it's on Twitter or whatever. There's this long pause. I thought some of the guys would be chiming in as we're reviewing going to break because it was a commercial break after he stiff-armed him. The thing I was going to say, and I kind of felt bad, I'm like, he threw Diggs out of the club, and I'm, I, I just said what was in my mind, yeah, right? Yeah, it was a wild <laughs> moment. I was going to say that, you know, he can he can declare Diggs' soul at customs, but I thought that was a little step too far. Piling on. So, but I did, I did say that he could declare that at customs. Yeah. So I kind of left Diggs out of it, even though I'm kind of throwing his name out here now. But, I mean, Rashad White can run like that, and it's still Bra- Brady – Looks his arm is really great. good. Yeah, yeah. And and they were saying Godwin's finally getting back to himself. Evans is Evans. They just need that tight end, like Gronk, that red zone threat that Gronk was, not only that running the ball too. He's a hall, he's a first ball Hall of Famer for a reason. Yeah. And, and they're Kate hoping can, Kate can do that's it. That's the guy that they're hoping on. Cameron like, Braid is back. Braid just got back, but I, I don't know if, honestly that I, I think Otten's the one that that they're looking at that could maybe sustained for the rest of the year because break got hurt and uh, you know i mean at a neck and then a concussion he's finally back and kyle rudolph even though he was there and looked great he couldn't have been nicer um he was inactive yeah. i don't know but defensively you know devin white was dealing with i guess the passing of his dad yeah and he was, he was playing he was level. just yeah. he was firing off and De- vita vea seeing him in person one of the most massive individuals <laughs> i've seen and we asked him how much he weighed. He said 360. And I thought to myself, that's an NFL 360 right there. <laughs> Boom. I mean, seriously. <laughs> wow. So, hey, Bucks fans, you know, and Brady came out of that game energized. Energized. They're going to go on their bye week, and we'll see what happens from here on out. But that team I saw in Munich is a team that can maybe go to Arizona. And I'm not just saying that because they're Yeah, they will. Yeah, they're going to have a playoff maybe game. Maybe against the Giants. For the Cowboys, catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.